I want to talk briefly about another couple of influential attempts to give substance to the idea of enoughness. Uh, the first appeals to the concept of happiness, the second to the concept of sustainability. And we sympathise deeply with the goals of both these movements, but we believe that they mislocate the real basis of our objection to endless growth, which is not utilitarian but ethical. So happiness economics, a movement with, with which I'm sure you're familiar, I believe uh, Derek Bock gave a talk uh, in this very room not long ago, um, takes off from the observation that we in the developing world, um, although we're pretty happy, don't seem to be getting any happier, um, even though we're getting richer the whole time on average. So the conclusion seems obvious. It's time to switch our attention from GDP to GDH, gross domestic happiness. Um, and this has become a very influential movement um, in policy circles in recent years. Many countries now have happiness indexes. Now, we're, we're in deep sympathy with the negative goal of happiness economics, i.e. to get us off the growth treadmill, but we find its positive vision somewhat dispiriting. Do we really want to make happiness, in and of itself, the supreme goal of government? Doesn't it also matter what people are happy about? I mean, just to give you a thought experiment, think of a student who, um, thanks to a double dose of Prozac, is serenely indifferent to his impending failure in exams, um, in, a, in a fool's paradise, as people say. I mean, might it not be better for this student not to be happy? For at least then he'd be in touch with the reality of his situation. So in other words, it seems that happiness is not good in and of itself, but insofar as it's due, insofar as we have reason to be happy. And to make happiness in and of itself, independent of its objects, the supreme goal of government is to open the door to brave new world. Uh, so we don't want to get rid of the engineers of growth only to see them replaced with the engineers of bliss. Um, OK, another very influential anti-growth argument focuses on the finitude of our natural resources. Endless growth is an ecological impossibility. Sooner or later, we'll exhaust the world's supply of oil, gas, coal, uranium, or its ability to absorb their waste products. Climate change scientists warn of the uh, impending destruction of the planet unless we take drastic measures to restrict growth. Now, of course, in abstract terms, it's impossible for us to carry on growing without end. I mean, the world is a sphere, um, and it's going to be pretty hard for us to leave it. The trouble is, we don't know when the day of reckoning is going to come. With a bit of technological wizardry, we may succeed in postponing it for some time yet. Um, so basing an ethical imperative upon a factual hypothesis is always a risky strategy, because if that factual hypothesis turns out to be false, the ethical imperative rings hollow. Um, so why not just admit what we already implicitly know? The real problem with endless growth is not pragmatic but ethical. It's that in a world in which we have enough collectively to carry on striving for more is crazy. Thank you.